Hey y'all, I am out in my greenhouse, kind of empty. We really have no seeds started in here. Um, you know those mornings you just wake up and you're like overwhelmed and everything gives you anxiety? Today was not that day. But then you know those mornings that you wake up, you just have this overwhelming sense of gratitude and thankfulness. That's what today is. I woke up so thankful. Sometimes I think it's it's good if we kind of take a step back, right? Like we can get, and when I say we, I'm really kind of just talking to myself here. I can get so overwhelmed in the daily task and the things that need to be done, that need to be checked off that list, that I forget to just pause, stop, reflect, and really just kind of sit in the gratitude of what it is that I get to do. And this morning I woke up and I was just overwhelmed with thankfulness that this is what I get to do. Um, and it has just been such a good day. So I'm hoping um, and praying that you all are just filled with gratitude and thankfulness today, despite all the other things that might be going on. Um, and I'm extra thankful because I'm back out in my greenhouse. So um, I'm Jill Reagan. Welcome to Whispering Willow Farm. If you are new here, I am so happy that you decided to hang out with me today. If you are a loyal, avid fan, thanks for showing up. I appreciate you all so much. So we are about to start um, our big push for fall and winter and I wanted to just talk to you guys about that but today is a special day because I get to start some very very special seeds that I'm really pumped to talk to you about but um, I'm really kind of anal when it comes to our crop plans. We've got them all in an Excel spreadsheet. But while I was kind of thinking through all the things I needed to jot down into that spreadsheet, I had this lovely little piece of paper. <laughs> and so I'm going to share that with you. I mean, it's just for fall and winter. This is really, really um, a rough sketch. I go into like... Um, varieties if it needs to be direct seeded or transplanted um, we've got everything zoned so if it gets like it's going in the cottage garden the raised bed the tunnel um, things like that so this is like this isn't normal Jill behavior but I've got July 15th we need to be starting tomatoes summer and winter squashes cucumbers and more beans uh, July 15th through August 15th we need to be seeding all of our brassicas September 1st I need to be direct seeding my root crops and then weekly I need to be doing lettuce and baby greens so I am going to be talking a lot about that I know that for many of us especially if you are a new and beginner gardener when you think about seed starting, you think about being bundled up. It's cold outside. You might have snow. You're either in your greenhouse. Some of us are starting them indoors under, you know, like grow lights and racks. Not often are we thinking of seed starting and we're out here in a tank top and shorts and sweating our butt off. Um, but I would argue that if you are wanting to be an intensive small scale grower, you need to be starting seeds and thinking about this often. And so you really have have that you know January February push for your spring and summer crops but then when you start getting into the later part of the summer you really get to emphasize on starting a whole new round of things and that's going to be your fall and your winter now I absolutely love growing in the fall and the winter my favorite time to be a gardener ever um, and so I'm hoping to just kind of shine some light on that this year with my content teaching you what you can be starting right now how to care for those things throughout the fall and the winter I know everyone's climates and their frost states and their zones all make a difference. Even if you guys can just follow my journey and encourage you guys on things that you can be starting and growing yourself on your farm, that's what I wanna do. I wanna encourage more people to grow more food. Um, and so while we are making a huge emphasis on a food push, that's not what I'm starting today. Today I am starting some really special seeds. So these seeds came from Sunflower Steve. Uh, Sunflower Steve has become a really good friend of mine and funny enough I don't even know Steve's last name he's literally in my phone book my contacts at Sunflower Seed so my dear friend Jessica introduced me to Steve he reached out to me and we have been talking over the last year and I don't know if you've visited Roots and Refuge their Instagram their YouTube or their podcast uh, she has got a lot of 
uh, behind the scenes information where she's done interview styles with Steve and really hearing his heart and his vision. And so he did this legacy pack um, and it's really, really cool, his heart and his vision. Um, and so he had these packs of these seeds, uh, these very unique um, sunflower seeds. He's been a flower farmer for years. I mean, he did this as a fundraiser to fund and get his church camp back up running. Um, and he sent me some of these and it is so special. Um, what they're doing and what they have the heart for is so unique. And so today I'm gonna be starting these sunflower seeds um, and thinking about Steve and what he's doing. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna bring you guys with me and we're gonna start some seeds in the greenhouse so depending on what it is that I'm starting it's going to largely depend on what I am starting um, my things in so in the winter time we are utilizing soil blocks quite a bit you guys can see I've got three different sizes here. We actually have five different soil block sizes that we use on our farm. I don't love the soil blocks this time of year. They dry out so quickly. I find that I start a lot of things and I just can't water as frequently as I need before they dry out. And so what I like to do is start things in my two and a half inch pots from Bootstrap Farmer. Now, along with starting seeds today, uh, the end of this video is gonna be a time lapse. So back in the fall, I partnered with Bootstrap Farmer. We came out with the hard collection it was this limited edition of two and a half inch pots super fun just really really cool well for the last six months since that launch we've been working on our summer collection and here she is it is the summer solstice collection inspired by the blooms of summer and I thought what better way to really represent this collection than starting Steve sunflower seeds in here so we've got the lavender we've got a teal We've got a pistachio green, a sunflower yellow, and a rose pink. So these are available. I'll put the link down below. And like I said, we'll kind of have some behind the scenes of these being made when we went to the Midwest uh, just a few months ago. But this is what we're gonna start them in. And then I've got the deep 1020 tray from Bootstrap. So I'm just gonna go in here and line up my trays in here. All right, so now I have them all here. You guys, this literally makes my heart so stinking happy. I get overjoyed um, probably quickly. Some people would probably say I get overjoyed quickly. But coming out into my greenhouse and seeing life and color fills me up so much. So even just seeing this and then knowing that it's gonna just produce all these beautiful sunflowers makes me uh, really happy. So one thing you wanna think about when seed starting, and it does not matter if you are starting vegetable seeds or flower seeds, this is still very, very important, uh, the soil medium that you're using. So you have a few different options. You've got a seed starting mix, which traditionally doesn't have uh, any added like fertilizers in it. So if you're keeping these, um, you know, your seedlings in the trays for a while, you'll notice that they become deficient in some things. And you might have to add some sort of, you know, amendment or fertilizer. Or you have like a potting mix that does have in those added fertilizers and you, you know, don't have to add more things in there. Uh, the cost on those are a bit different. Honestly, I have found where I am, we have a really hard time sourcing soil. Um, so really, I just have to kind of make do with what I have available to me. Um, I did go to a local co-op yesterday and was able to snag this happy frog. Um, it's a potting soil, so it does have a, you know, a fertilizer in it. And this is for indoor or outdoor plants. I do use this a lot with my house plants and it works fairly well. Um, so this is what we're gonna use today. So a couple things I'll mention before I start filling up pots. One is that you want to moisten your soil medium. Um, it's always a good idea um, that it's not just super, super dry, especially if you've had just these bags of soil sitting outside, they've dried out quite a bit. Um, I like it to have that sponge type consistency. So I like to be able to kind of squeeze it and it forms, um, but not too wet and saturated. And so what I do is I just take a quick water hose to it, take my hands, mix it up really well. And then of course you're gonna be wanting to water those really well um, after you have started them. Um, another thing too is if you are buying some sort of potty mix and it might have more, you know, larger pieces of like bark or mulch, maybe go through, put it through a sifter or just hand pick out some of those things, um, they can 
prevent your seedlings from like establishing good roots. Um, and so you obviously don't want that either. If you're putting all the time in to start seeds yourself, you just kind of want to set yourself up with the best success. And so make sure you've got good soil, you know, medium. Um, you're moistening it, you're removing any large debris that might be in it. All right, so let's talk through why someone might start their own seeds. Um, I feel like there is a lot of value in starting your own seeds. Um, and a few of those reasons are, is you'll notice if you're buying from a local store or a box store, they typically only have seeds one time a year, and that is for the summer garden. You very rarely see fall or winter start somewhere. Um, so one, that's it, because you just like, there's the availability of being able to start seeds whenever you want. Especially for me, you know, I'm starting lettuce and spinach and baby greens uh, weekly. I'm not gonna be able to go to the store from here on out um, and find that. Not even at our farm supply store, not at a tractor supply, not at anything like that. So that is an advantage of starting your own seeds is that you get to control when you wanna start your food, how often, and things like that. Um, another big reason, probably one of the biggest reasons for me, is the variety. Um, so we're growing primarily these hybrid greenhouse, high producing varieties. You can't find those at the store. And truthfully, where I am, Bonnie is the only option for plants. And so you're limited on the variety and variety changes a lot, um, you know, based off of where you are. Things that do well in one area might not do well in another. Uh, we live in a very hot climate, so I want heat tolerant uh, greens, um, different spinaches, different uh, lettuces. I'm not going to be able to go to the store and find that. They are just doing, you know, the, the traditional bib lettuce or you know, whatever type of one variety of spinach that they offer is just all they offer. So for me, there is a lot of different benefits of starting it. You can succession seed often. And one, I just think it's a valuable tool to have in your tool belt. Um, how many of you guys can say, I know how to start my own, you know, food from seed and nurture it and care for it until it actually produces food that then my family gets to eat. That is a really, really good stinking feeling. And for me, I just wanna load my tool belt up with as many things as I can. So even if you don't always wanna start seeds, this isn't something you wanna do every single year. I do encourage you at some point, try to start something from seed and just see how it does. That way you can have that tool and that resource if you ever need it. Or maybe if you just change your mind, decide that, you know what, actually I do wanna start uh, my own seeds, you'll know how to do it. So here I've got all of my stuff filled with soil. Um, you do want to make sure that you have the soil coming up, you know, to the top. There's a kind of a ridge um, and a lip here on these pots. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. And then I'm just going to go in, plant my seeds and push them down. Alrighty, so let's talk through a couple more things when it comes to seed starting. Um, one, how, how deep do you plant your seed? I talk to a lot of beginner gardeners and I think this might be something that deters people um, from starting their own seed because they've heard stories of other people starting their seeds. And one of the things that I get is I started all my seeds and nothing germinated. Um, I'll even hear this from people who are buying from seed companies who have like 98% germ rate, right? More than likely it's not the seed, it is that we did something a little bit wonky in the seed starting process. Um, and nine times out of 10 is that we have planted the seed too deep. So what happens when you plant the seed too deep is that little seedling puts all of its energy just trying to get to the light um, because for most of these they need, you know, uh, sunlight, water, um, all these things for them to thrive, they'll spend all their energy getting to the top and either they die before they ever reach the top or they do barely reach the top and they die. Why is that? It's because it's spending all of its energy just trying to get to the soil surface versus if you're not planting it very deep, it doesn't spend a lot of energy before it gets to the sunlight and then it can send all that energy down into its roots, developing its roots and you just have a healthier plant overall. Um, and so 
you know, kind of the rule that I do is that you're planting your seeds twice as deep as the seed is wide. However, most seed packets will tell you um, how far or how deep uh, to plant your things. For me, I just, I usually always eyeball it. Um, but some things, you know, like flowers, they actually don't even want to be pressed into the soil at all because they need the light to germinate. And so you'll just sow them on the top, water them well, and then that's it. Um, and so... It is important to read the seed packet, um, but I think once you you know s are starting seeds so often and you're kind of used to it, you just know the things you're starting. You start to figure out what they prefer as far as light to germinate, or maybe they need to be covered with some soil, how deep they are, watering preferences, um, and things like that. Another thing most seeds need uh, to germinate is warmth. Now, this is something that if you're starting seeds in the winter time, you'll need to either add a heater into your greenhouse. A lot of times, people will use seedling heat mats I've done this in the past but when you are starting things and you know it's 100 degrees here for me here in Arkansas you don't have to worry about those other elements um, you just want to make sure that they're getting good airflow um, that they're getting watered properly um, I even find too that it is um, you know more beneficial a lot of times to water less but more frequently than like just drenching them over saturating them and then not you know messing with them for the rest of the day um, another common problem you'll see in starting seeds is uh, dampening off and that's what that's what happens when your seedling reaches the top of the soil surface and then the stem of it just becomes so brittle and it just falls over, it rots off essentially. Uh, that is a good indication that you are watering too much, uh, which is why when it comes to certain things, um, I really just prefer to use these deep 1020 trays. That way I can bottom water all of them. So you'll fill this water up. Your you know, pots, these are two and a half inch pots, they'll set in there and they'll actually absorb all that water from the bottom um, with the little holes that are in here and it just disperses it um, equally throughout the plant. And you'll notice that you are dealing with less of those disease issues. Um, if you are bottom watering and not overhead watering. Now, if I'm being totally transparent, when my seedlings get a bit bigger, I do overhead water. We're actually setting up uh, automatic misters in this greenhouse and that will be overhead. Um, but to kind of avoid some of those seed starting um, issues, it would probably be best to bottom water, especially if you are new to seed starting and you're really just trying to set yourself up um, and you don't really know what a problem is when it arises to immediately go to fix it. Um, I've been starting seeds for several years now and so I do feel like I have a decent grasp on like, oh man, I can even just kind of look at my plants and gauge if they're too dry or too wet, I'm not having to test. But if you don't know, stick a finger down in there, pick up your tray. If it feels super, super light, you know you definitely need to water. But watering can consistently in this beginning stage is definitely uh, crucial. If you want to know more about seed starting, I talk about this a lot in my book. I actually have an entire chapter. It's called The Tiny But Mighty Farm. It's available for pre-order. I'll put a link down below. I um, mean, I really kind of just map out um, all the basics, all the equipment needed. I have these different charts to help troubleshooting with different seed starting problems because I really do think that we're all more well-rounded growers when we know how to do more diverse things in our farms, on our homesteads, and in our gardens. And I do think seed starting, like I mentioned, is one of those things that just make us a bit more well-rounded um, when it comes to knowing how to do something on our farm. All right, friends, I'm gonna give these seedlings a nice little bath, but it really is so simple. It does not have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be this complex, scary thing starting seeds. You just have to be willing to try and fail and try again. And that doesn't mean that you're always going to fail. You could be a total natural at seed starting and you just don't even know yet. Um, so the rest of this video, I'm going to show you guys some behind the scenes of making these pots. These are the only pots that I'm using. If I'm not uh, soil blocking, I'm doing it in a major way in the, in the winter. Um, but any other thing that I am starting is going to go in these two and a half inch pots like I said it was a collaboration with bootstrap it just feels so good this was one of those dreams that I've been working towards for a while I'm really wanting to have my own line of trays and so it feels really really cool I hope you guys enjoy seeing the process uh, like I mentioned it is a limited edition so when they sell out that's it so if you like these colors and you don't have to buy them all 
as a set. So if one of these colors tickles your fancy more than the other, you can just buy, you know, 40 or 80 of the teal, purple, you know, yellow or green. You don't have to buy them all as a pack. But hope you guys enjoy what was going on in the factory. I'll talk to you. What's up guys? I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear me or not because I'm in a really loud factory, but we have made it to Kansas City. Uh, we are here with Bootstrap Farmer for a few days and behind me is a massive machine where we are running our summer collection of pots. If you guys remember, we did the harvest collection back in the fall. Uh, it did so well that we decided to do a summer collaboration with much more colorful um, pots, really kind of flowers were the inspiration behind this collection. So I'm really excited that I can just share with you guys the next few days of just being here and watching our trays get made. Thank <laughs> you. 